Hello and good afternoon to everybody who is already here. Well done, you're right on time for today's story. My name is Rachel. Um, it's lovely to be here with you. I know we've got some people who are going to be with us today live, so you're here right now. And there are some people who are going to be watching this video in a recording because we also record our stories every week so that you can either watch it again or listen to it again, or you might be listening to it another time. So I'm saying hello to all of you this afternoon. Um, but let's start off by seeing who we've got with us right now. Um, and if you know how to use the chat box on, on your computer, you can just write me a little message to tell me who you are, so what your name is, and perhaps how old you are, and whereabouts you are calling from, because we're calling from all over, maybe all over the UK, but maybe all over the world, because sometimes we have people from our schools who come and listen and they're all over the world. So I'm going to start off and put a message into the chat box to say hello. Uh, we have got, my name is Rachel, and I am calling today from Totnes in Greece, in, in uh, the UK. I've got a message already from Alex. Alex is with us from Greece. And actually, I know Alex. He's a friend of mine and he lives on a boat. So hello to Alex. And oh, look, my sister's here. And my little nieces and nephews. So hello to Noah and to Lily Mae. We've got, um, who else we've got here? Leani, who is eight years old and lives in Devon. Uh, we have got Bo, age six. I remember Bo, you came last week, didn't you, as well? Nice to see you. We've got Charlie and Thomas, who are calling from Edinburgh. We've got Eska, who's here, and she's three years old. Hello, Eska. So we've got lots of people already. And as I said, some of you are going to be watching with us right now live, and some of you are going to be watching in the recording. So you're all really welcome. We've got Pip, who's in Buckfastly. Hello, Pip. It's lovely to see you. Now, those of you who saw our, or listened to our story last week, we were meeting Grasshopper last week and the story was called Grasshopper's Lost Hop. And we're going to have a completely different story this week with one of our new characters who is called Dormouse. I'm saying hello to Sadie. Sadie's here from Totnes. She's age six. Hi, Sadie. So today's story from the Thoughtful Tales is called Dormouse's Wobbly Tree. And this story is from our topic, which is all about habitats. Now, I thought this would be a good story for today because it's all about our home and where we live. And because of um, the lockdown that many of us are having, we're all spending a lot of time inside our homes. So I thought this would be quite a good story because it's helping us to think a little bit about where we live and who else lives in our house. And we're going to have time at the end of the story to talk a little bit about some of the messages from Dormouse's story and for you to have a little think about some of the ideas that we're going to uncover in this story. So a quick hello to Charlie and Thomas, who are calling in from Edinburgh. Lovely to see you, or not quite see you, but lovely to welcome you here today. So I'm going to start the story. And like I did last week, I'm going to share my screen. And what happens is that you can then decide whether you want to look at the story with me. And those of you who are good at reading, you can read along with me. Or you can do what I love to do when people read me a story, which is to close my eyes. And I just love to listen to the story and use my imagination and think about what the characters look like and, and who they are and what they're doing. So however you would like to listen, you can listen in that way. So make sure you are sitting comfortably um, and I'm going to share my screen and we're going to start today's story. OK. So, as I said, today's story is called Dormouse's Wobbly Tree. Dormouse was quietly snoozing in her treetop nest, feeling all snuggly and cosy and dreaming of ripe, delicious berries. All of a sudden, she was shaken awake by a big thud, thud, thud at the bottom of her tree, and she tumbled straight out of bed. What just happened? squeaked Dormouse, feeling a little bit dazed and peering down from the treetop in alarm. When she looked down to the ground below, all that she could see was a cloud of sawdust rising up from the bottom of her tree. She rubbed her little eyes to wake them up properly and then she crawled slowly down the tree to investigate what on earth was happening. As she neared the bottom, the tree suddenly started to wobble and to shake and the branches above her started to break. 
Dormouse squealed with fright and leaped to the floor just in time as a mighty loud voice below her suddenly cried, Timber! And the tree toppled over, crashing heavily to the ground. Dormouse couldn't believe her eyes. Somebody had just chopped her tree down, uh, cho chopped down her home. She looked around as the dust started to clear and she saw a figure nearby hurrying over to the tree next door where Dormouse's friend Squirrel lived. Within a few minutes, the same flurry of sawdust could be seen rising up from the bottom of the trunk. And then the tree started wobbling and shaking, just like Dormouse's tree had done before. Timber! Dormouse heard again, as this time Squirrel's tree toppled to the ground with a mighty crash. Luckily, Squirrel was an early riser and had headed off into the forest searching for nuts and so fortunately was knocked up in the tree when it fell. Dormouse scurried as fast as she could down the rest of her tree, shaking the dust off her fur. She heard the rumble of an engine and then a cloud of dust in the distance as a large truck roared off through the forest, dragging several tree trunks behind it. She stood in silence as the dust cleared. Across the other side of the forest, Beaver was busy building a dam. Just the day before, she'd found a pile of very tall, strong trees lying on the ground that somebody had cut down in the forest. These chopped down trees, she decided, would be perfect for building her new dam. Now, Beaver already had a very good dam, but decided that she wanted a brand new one now that she'd seen these lovely logs. She woke up very early and stretched herself ready for a hard day's work. She soon set off to the log pile and after a few hours had already pulled several of the trees from the forest back home to use for her dam. As she was busy tugging at a rather stubborn tree trunk, she heard a little voice next to her and turned to see who it was. Stop, Beaver, stop! What are you doing? squeaked Dormouse, standing up on her hind legs as Beaver tugged and tugged at the fallen tree. I'm building a brand new dam, said Beaver proudly. Would you like to watch? Beaver, you can't just pull these trees around. Each of these trees is a home to many creatures that live in the woods, including me, cried Dormouse, looking around in despair. She looked mournfully over to the tree lying on the ground that was once her home. Someone from outside the forest has cut down all of our homes. Why are you building a new dam, Beaver? Is your dam no longer working? asked Dormouse curiously. Beaver suddenly felt rather guilty when she realised that she had no reason to be taking these logs and building a new dam, as she already had a perfectly good dam of her own. So she changed the subject and she said instead, do you know Dormouse, I've never stopped to notice the creatures living high up in these trees before. Thank you for bringing them to my attention. And she looked thoughtfully around the forest floor and the treetops and she noticed how many creatures were scuttling about. Maybe you've just not been paying attention, said Dormouse reproachfully. Just like, the cre just like whoever it is that chopped out all these trees. There have been creatures living in these trees forever. In my tree alone, there are so many different types of creatures living together. Some of them so small, you might not even notice that they are here. Dormouse took Beaver over to her fallen tree and they stood quietly for a moment looking around. The ground was alive with activity, little creatures dusting themselves off and sorting themselves out after having had a very sudden awakening to the day. As Beaver and Dormouse stood and watched, they saw a whole family of spiders shaking their eight legs and dusting themselves off. Lots of angry ants marching in a line away from the tree 
and endless trails of earwigs scuttling around and around in a circle. The ground was alive with so many creatures, all shaken awake by the rather terrifying tree tumbling experience and all feeling a bit lost now that their home had been chopped down. Wow, said Beaver, standing back in amazement. I guess I've never really thought before about how many creatures live in these trees. I didn't see them, and so I didn't think about them at all. I just thought about my new dam and saw these trees just lying on the ground, and so I thought I'd drag them back home with me. Beaver looked mournfully around her at the piles of trees that had been chopped down, feeling very sad indeed for all of the creatures who had lost their homes. As Beaver stood there, feeling really rather glum, she had a thought. Rather than just feeling sad and gloomy about the creatures lost homes, she would do something positive to help. She turned back to Dormouse, her eyes flashing with excitement. Dormouse, I feel very sorry that somebody has destroyed your home and the homes of your friends. From now on, I'm going to pay attention to the natural habitats around me. Whenever I build a dam, I will try not to destroy any homes of the other creatures that live here. To make up for all of the destruction today, I'm going to plant lots of new trees in the forest to make up for each tree that has been cut down. And with that, Beaver whizzed off to the forest nursery where lots of little tree saplings were waiting to be planted. Before long, she came trotting back to where Dormouse was standing, her arms laden with small trees. With my fast digging paws, I'll have these new trees planted in no time, said Beaver. And before Dormouse could even blink, the air was filled with clouds of dust as Beaver dug hole after hole around the forest, popping in each of the little trees and tucking them gently into her new homes. Dormouse filled her little watering can from the river and poured water onto each new tree, giving them a good drink to help them grow tall and strong. When they had both finished, they stood together smiling proud of their hard work and excited for all of the new trees that would one day be towering in the forest. There's one more thing I would like to do today, said Beaver, turning to Dormouse with a big smile on her face. I've decided that instead of dragging these logs home to build myself a brand new dam, I'm going to help you and all of your friends to build new homes in the logs instead. And true to her word, Beaver worked tirelessly for the rest of the day, turning the chopped down trees that she had taken for her dam into the most magnificent log houses for Dormouse, Squirrel and all of the other creatures in the forest whose homes have been cut down. From that day forward, Beaver and Dormouse lived happily together in the forest, sharing the space harmoniously with the rest of the creatures around them and making sure to think about the needs of all the woodland dwellers, not just their own. The end. Okay, so that is the end of our story for today. Now we learned quite a lot in that story about Dormouse and Beaver and some of the things that were happening in their forest. And we're gonna have maybe 10 minutes now to just talk together about some of the things that we might have thought about when listening to that story. Now, before we come on to the thinking questions, I've got a general question for you about the word habitats. Now, Beaver used the word habitats in that story. And also I mentioned at the start the word habitats. But I wonder whether any of you know what habitat means. If you do, do you want to have a go at writing down in that chat box what you think habitat means? Now, there's a little bit of a clue because we've been talking about it in the story and Paula and her friends have come straight in there with their first answer. They said it's where they live, wonderful, and Joe and Lily May and, and Noah have put home. Well done, so a habitat is a home or where you lived. Thank you, Annie, who loved the story and really liked Beaver's tree planting. Yes, we're gonna be talking about the tree planting in a minute. So habitat is where we live. And so my first question to all of you 
is who lives in your house? Now, I want you to think about this question and tell me who lives in your house. And you can write down in your chat box again who lives with you. So it might be mummy or daddy or your brother or sister. You might have some pets. You might have aunts and uncles that live with you. We might have grannies and grandpas. But who lives in your house? I wonder. So maybe some of you can just think about that. Some of you might want to tell me and write it down in the chat box. So we've got mum, dad, dog and two brothers living at Paula's house. Wonderful. We've got um, mum, dad, brother Cole in a hamster in Lindsay's house. Mum, dad, Noah and the dog in Joe's house. Mummy, daddy, Esker and all her toys. Yes, they probably fill a lot of space up in Esker's house. I wonder when I asked that question, did any of you think about the people or the creatures that live in your house that you don't notice. So as we've got Tina, we've got mum, dad and Ella in her house. We've got Lila that lives in Claire's house. Ellie, mummy, daddy, Obi the cat dog and two cats in Greta's house. So let me ask that question again. When I asked you who lives in your house, did any of you think about who lives in your house that you maybe don't notice? And Paula has started to notice who else might live in their house. So Paul is now noticing that there's some spiders that live in her house. I'm going to write down in the chat box, earwigs, because in my house, there are lots and lots of earwigs that live in here. I also have some spiders. Um, I sometimes have a, a little creature that comes in the mouse in the night called a mouse who scuttles around in my house. We've got some daddy long legs in Lindsay's house. Who else might live in your house that maybe you don't notice? Ch sorry, Ch Thomas and Charlie, I will call you from now on, sorry. Um, who else lives in your house that maybe you don't notice? We've got spiders, daddy long legs, earwigs. All of us in our houses, even if we don't realise, will have lots of bugs. And even as Lorraine says, some birds might nest on the roof. Now, we don't notice some of these creatures, or we've got some rats as well, thank you. We might not notice these creatures because they're small and they're quiet. And sometimes we might think that they don't belong in our house, but whether we like it or not, our house is their home. Now in the story, somebody chopped down Dormouse's tree, but it wasn't just Dormouse's tree. We also know that there were spiders and ants and earwigs that lived in that tree and probably hundreds and hundreds of other creatures. So when that tree was knocked down, lots and lots of other creatures lost their house. So one of the things I would like to invite all of you to do is to start to notice who you share your habitat with. Now, at the end of the story, Beaver and Dormouse decided that they were going to help all of the creatures to live together and they built some new log houses. And I imagine some of you before have built some log houses or some bug hotels or have places in your garden for creatures to be safe and happy. But I would like to invite all of you to think a little bit about how you can support all the creatures around you to live together. So we've got birds on the roof from Annie and Eska. We've got some mice and bugs in other people's houses. So think about how to make your house a nice place rather than killing things. Now, some things you might not want in your house. And as Charlie and Thomas are saying, that doesn't mean we need to kill them. We can just put them outside or find them another home. And that's what I do when this little mouse comes into my house. I put him outside into the garden because I think he'd perhaps prefer to live there. Now, another thing I would like to think about with this story is a question about Beaver's dam. Now, when we met Beaver, Beaver said that, that she was going to use all of those chopped chop down logs to build a dam. And Dormouse asked Beaver a question. Dormouse asked Beaver a question about her dam. And she said, why are you building a new dam, Beaver? Is your dam no longer working? Now, can any of you remember what Beaver said about why she was building a new dam? Now, actually, Beaver felt a little bit guilty towards the end of the story about why she was building a new dam with her logs. Can any of you remember what the reason was that she said for why she was building a new dam? Now, it might be a bit tricky to remember, so I'll help you if you can't remember. But she gave a reason. Lindsay got, got very close. She said she saw some fancy new logs and she wanted something new. Well done, Charlie and Thomas. So the only reason Beaver wanted a new dam was because she wanted something new. 
Now, my question to you is, did Beaver need a new dam? Did she need a new dam? Was her dam broken or old or falling apart? No, all of you are saying no, she didn't need a new dam. She wanted a new dam because she wanted something new. And I think there's a very big difference between two words, need and greed. Now, if we need something, that might be because what we have is broken or old or disappeared, or maybe we don't have something and therefore we have a need for it. However, greed is a very different thing. If we have something already and we decide we want a new one because we just want a bigger one or a better one, but the thing we've got already is very good, we don't actually need a new one. A little bit like a new toy, we might have a wonderful toy and we decide we need a new one because we want more, but actually what we've got is pretty good already. So one of the lessons I think we can learn from this story is to think about, do we need it? Or are we just being a bit greedy? And that can help us to recognise when we do need some new things. Now, the third thing I noticed in this story was a mysterious character. And this mysterious character we didn't actually meet. They scuttled away or they drove away. This mysterious character was somebody who was creating a big cloud of sawdust and a lot of noise. It was somebody that was shouting timber and it was somebody who drove off very quickly. Who do you think that character was? And we've already got an answer, a guess from Charlie and Thomas, which is a woodcutter. We've got humans as another guess. Yes, I think we can all guess that the person that came in to the forest to chop down that tree was actually a person, a human. Now, we all use trees in our daily lives. We might use trees for um, a wooden floor. If you have in your house, like I do, we've got a wooden floor that's been made out of trees. Or you can see behind me, I've got a fireplace that's been made out of wood. We might have um, trees that we chop down to make into paper to be writing on or to be printing our books. So there are lots of things that we use trees for. But some of the things that we use trees for, we need and some of the things are greed. And one of the questions I would like you to think about is when we chop trees down, do we really need what we're buying or is it just greedy? And we've got a really, really important point that Charlie and Thomas have just mentioned, which is one of the most important things that trees do. And I don't know whether you've learned about this yet, yet but trees help us to breathe. Now, when we think about that, that's a crazy idea, but actually trees are some of the most important things in the natural world for human beings and for many other creatures to help us breathe. Because when we breathe in our oxygen, it comes out of the trees. They take in our carbon dioxide and they produce oxygen to help us to breathe. So if we didn't have any trees left, we'd be in a big, in big trouble, wouldn't we? So one of the positive things that we notice in the story, and I think Annie and Eska mentioned this earlier, is that beaver and wood and dormouse plant some new trees. So every time a tree is chopped down, they've planted lots and lots of new trees to make up for it. Now, it's not the same thing. Planting a new tree is not the same thing as chopping down an old tree. And we already know some of the reasons. When trees are very old, they have lots and lots of creatures living on them. And if you imagine a very tiny little seed growing, nothing will live in that little seed for a long time. So the answer isn't to chop down all the trees and plant new ones. The answer really is to think, do we need to chop down so many trees? And actually, what can we do to protect more of our trees? Because Trees are living beings, thank you, Lindsay, just like all the creatures in them. Now, before we go and before we end today, I want to ask you, do you have anything that this story made you wonder about? Now, some of our stories are, are written to make you think some big things, or they might be written to ask you to question some things or to have some thoughts or to wonder about things. So if any of you've got any more questions about the story that you want to ask, now is the time. We've got a few more minutes before I'm gonna say goodbye. So any more questions that you've got, you can put them into the chat box and we can talk about them. Or you might just want to have a little think about some of the lessons that you've learned from this story. And I think Lindsay's put a lovely idea there of respecting nature. 
Now, one of the things that we really understood from Beaver is that Beaver didn't notice some of the natural things around her. She didn't notice all the little bugs that were living in the trees. She didn't notice how many beautiful things were in the forest and in the, in the areas around her. So actually something we can do is really respect the natural world and appreciate that we're sharing our home. Now, just because human beings are big, doesn't mean we're the only ones that live here. We can all live together. So I think we've got a question there from Joe. It says, do you need to fear bugs? I don't think you need to fear bugs because bugs are just minding their own business. And I always think if I find a spider in my house, he hasn't come in my house to annoy me. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I just pop him outside or put him back in his, in his web or leave him there really normally. So lots of lovely ideas from all of you. We don't need to kill bugs because they have a life too. We can respect nature. We can notice some of the beautiful things all around us. And we can really understand that trees are connected to everything and we need trees to be able to breathe. So they're really important in our lives. And also, I think Jo said she would like a mouse. Well, it's a lovely thing to have. Some people don't like mice, but I think a really nice little thing to have in your house. OK, well, thank you all of you for being with us today. It was great to talk to you and learn from you as well as learn with Dormouse and Beaver. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Next week, we're going to be here again on Wednesday. We're going to try and do a double bill next Wednesday, which means we're going to have two stories. And I've invited my friend Jo along next week, who's also going to be reading a story. So come along next Wednesday at four o'clock and join us for two more thoughtful tales. And if you want to watch this story again or listen again, I'll be sharing on our Facebook page link to the story so thank you so much for coming i'll say goodbye to all of you now so we've got a goodbye from claire thank you goodbye from charlie and thomas thank you pip and i hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day goodbye and see you again next week <laughs>